I saw The Outsiders musical on Broadway and this video is going to be my review. Two things of note before I get into my review, I saw this in the third week of previews so things might be changing here or there between when I saw it and when it officially opens. I also have never read the book The Outsiders by S.E. Hinton so my review is going to be from somebody who doesn't know the original source material so I won't be comparing it to the book and I've also never seen the film so I won't be comparing it to the film. I'm just going to be reviewing it as if it were an original musical or an original story that I didn't know anything about going into this because I truly had no context about what this show was even about, why Stay Gold was even on the shirt, and what themes we were even going to be exploring here. The only context I had going into this is that it had received mostly positive reviews when it originally premiered in California and that Angelina Jolie was producing it and then once the notebook officially opened to reviews that weren't raves and weren't 100% positive, I was hearing that maybe The Outsiders could now be a potential frontrunner for Best Musical. So that was my context going in. I knew nothing about the story or the themes, just that I was excited to see a new show that had some buzz behind it that could potentially be in that front runner conversation for Best Musical. And this review is also going to be spoiler free, so I will not be spoiling any plot elements to the story. The Outsiders follows our main character Ponyboy as a high schooler, and it focuses on his family, his friendship, and his community. It takes place in Tulsa, Oklahoma in the 1960s, and his family are his two brothers, since his his parents are not alive. His best friend is Johnny, who he cares about deeply, and his community is the Greasers versus the Soches, wherein the Greasers are more a ragtag found family group, lower socioeconomic status, and the Soches are higher socioeconomic status living on the other side of town. At this point, it's been over a week since I've seen the show, and I wanted to sit on my thoughts on the show before officially forming them for my review, because I want to be specific about what I liked about it, what I didn't like about it, and what I loved about it, because there were things that fit into each of these three categories, liked, didn't like, and loved. Two things that I loved about it were the scenic design and the direction. Those are my favorite aspects of the show that I remember being in all during and the main thing I was thinking about after were the scenic design and the direction. The scenic design was impressive because it really transformed all parts of the stage, sides, back, floor, into this town. And I thought it was really smart the way that the elements of the stage were utilized in scenes and songs and in transitions. We barely had any furniture or set pieces moving in and out. A lot of the times the set became the furniture. Whether that be the back wall of the stage, the jungle gym, a car, or a tire. I was really impressed with the use of scenic design, particularly comparing it to some of the shows I've seen on Broadway in the past season, where it's been more of a bare minimum set or scenic design that was more about aesthetic. I thought that this scenic design really stood out to me and the way that the director used the scenic design elements within the story throughout the whole time kept it a very unified vision. So even if the score wasn't as strong at times or the book scenes weren't as strong as at times, it still felt like a coherent streamlined musical and story because of these design elements. And the scenic design for this production was done by AMP featuring Tatiana Kavigian and the director is Donya Tamor. So between these scenic design elements and the use of the stage cohesively throughout the show made me impressed with the direction and then all the way up to one of our big act two moments with a scene in the rain where nearly everybody in the cast is on stage. It felt like the whole show was leading up to that number leading up to that vision, and I don't think that that rain scene would have been as successful visually or emotionally if we hadn't had that united vision with the scenic design elements. And so, although I was impressed the whole time with the direction and scenic design, it was that scene that really sealed the deal for me that, oh, depending on how emotionally hard this ending hits, this is going to be what stands out to me about this show. And that rain scene was well done with choreography as well, and the show was choreographed by Rick Kupperman and Jeff Kupperman. Moving into the flow of the show and the score in the book, I thought that Act 1 took a little bit to warm up for me. It wasn't until the final Act 1 ballad into the Act 1 finale that I was invested in the characters and what was going on. And then Act 2, I was completely engaged. I think that me not knowing what the story was about or what I was in store for definitely had an effect on my engagement level since I wasn't really engaged for most of Act 1 until those last two songs. And then Act 2 was a completely wild ride where I was incredibly engaged. So I'm not 
don't think that's necessarily a criticism of Act 1 where I wasn't engaged in the first half. I think it was more just an observation, but I do wonder if people that read the book were maybe more engaged because I was thinking about, oh, some of these character relationships that we learn more about in Act 2, we need to set up in Act 1 to get invested in them but since i didn't realize what the importance of some of these relationships were until the second half of the show the act one setup wasn't as engaging so for that reason i think that could be a criticism of the book of this musical meaning the scenes in the musical where they're trying to set up the relationships with these characters and give the audience backstory information and context but they need to do it in an engaging and emotional way whereas sometimes it seems slow and we're just trying to get to the next song which leads me to the score some of the elements of the score were strong some are definitely going to be skips for me when the cast recording comes out in may they've already released three songs for the show they've released the opening song called tulsa 1967 they've released great expectations which is in act one and they've released stay gold which is in act two i purposely didn't listen to any of the three songs until after i saw the show because i wanted to go in with no prior context of what the score was going to be but i have been listening to those songs since seeing the show particularly great expectations has been my most listened to song. But it definitely made me think that I, I think it's exciting that these new musicals are putting out songs ahead of opening to try to help with buzz and word of mouth. But since it's still in previews, does that mean that they can't change anything about the songs since they've already been produced and released? Or do they have to make sure to put out songs that they know that they aren't going to change? I was thinking about that. I think my favorite songs that I'm most looking forward to hearing when the cast recording comes out are The Great Expectations reprise that's in act one and the act one finale i think it might be called run run brother act two opener and dally's song in act two i never said who dally was he's another greaser and he gets the third to last bow so he's a main character i didn't pull up the track list from my playbill because i already have it in a frame another reason i'm recommending this to people is because the performances were impressive particularly our main three leads we have birdie grant as pony boy sky lakota lynch as johnny and joshua boone as dally i had previously seen sky and dear evan hansen he played jared and then this is my first time seeing Brody and joshua i like them all for different reasons reasons Brody had incredible stamina because he's on stage for the whole time and he carries the show and so as the audience you have to be invested in Ponyboy's story to care about the show and I was impressed with how he was able to do that as in get me to care the whole time because of him. Guy as Johnny incredibly different role than Jared and he was incredibly emotionally compelling in act two but also act one and i think great expectations reprise i cried during which is the act one ballad between pony boy and johnny also the sound design in that song specifically i think helped make me cry because you're hearing voices in other parts of the stage beyond just johnny and pony boy singing i think johnny is the main reason i want to read the book because he goes through just as substantial of an arc as pony boy but i think johnny's is a little bit more obvious than pony boys and i think johnny goes through more overt character development throughout the show than pony boy so i definitely want to see if that's mirrored in the book as well that being said i think johnny is the performance that i'm thinking about the most However, Joshua Boone, who plays Dally, his big 11 o'clock number is the song that stands out to me the most. I think that's notable because if one of them were to get into Featured Actor, I'm not sure what Tony voters would go for because Johnny is the heart of the show. He's in the show more and he's definitely the heart of the show, whereas Joshua Boone has the standout moment in his big 11 o'clock number. But Johnny's the heart of the show, so I think it would be more likely that Sky would be nominated, but I also think that for what Joshua Boone does on the stage, I was completely wowed by his performance, and he's definitely somebody on my radar to continue seeing shows that he's cast in in the future, and I had no idea who he was before The Outsiders. Moving into one of my bigger criticisms with the show, which kind of has to do with the score slash my emotional connection with the material, Daryl, who is Ponyboy's older brother, Daryl has three songs, and I thought those were the weakest parts of the score, and so I found myself maybe zoning out a little or not as engaged as other moments, and I think that that hindered my investment and caring about the family aspect because Ponyboy has two brothers so we have the three brothers as the family unit and since the family unit is a big emotional core of the story in addition to Ponyboy's friendship and community since I wasn't as emotionally invested in Daryl's songs I think as a whole I wasn't as invested in Ponyboy's family relationships in the show I was mainly just invested in Ponyboy's friendship relationship with Johnny 
but since so much of the show is framed around Pony Boy's family, particularly at the beginning and the end, I think that I was wanting to have more of an emotional connection to the show and to Pony Boy and his brothers, but I didn't feel emotionally compelled by any of Daryl's songs or the ending with the family because we have these beautiful emotional moments with Dally. So Dally has this emotional arc that I cried in Act 2. Then we have Johnny having his emotional arc where I cried in Act 2. And then we have the last arc, which is the family element. And then nothing. I didn't feel emotionally compelled by the family arc. I was definitely bummed that I didn't cry with the family ending. I definitely wonder if the score or the book scenes with the family members was stronger, would I have been a little bit more emotionally connected to the story in that aspect? So this is why I definitely need to read the book to compare. Is the family element emotional in the book or are Dally and Johnny the most emotional things? I guess it makes sense that since we started with the pony and his family that we ended with pony and his family, but it almost seemed like the emotional payoff wasn't properly structured. All that to say, I wanted to love it, but something about my lack of emotional connection with the actual ending made me want to give it more of a 4.5 out of 5 instead of a 5 out of 5. I still really enjoyed the show and I will be recommending this to people, but something was holding me back from giving it a 5 and I think after thinking about it for a week, it came down to me taking longer to get engaged in Act 1, me thinking Daryl's songs and the scenes with the brothers were just fine, and upon some more reflection, I think sitting in the orchestra was a mistake for me. I think I could have maybe liked this better if I was sitting in the mez. This is moving into some seating advice. I would recommend sitting in the mez for this mezzanine and not orchestra because I was in the side orchestra. So when there was group ensemble scenes, I feel like I wasn't getting a full picture of what was going on. I was only able to see like the ensemble members that weren't blocked by heads. I was excited to see things up close for the orchestra, but I think for the scale of this show, when there are these beautiful moments in center stage or with a lot of cast on stage, I think I would have enjoyed it farther away, taking it all in from the mezzanine, although it was exciting to see all of those scenic design elements closer up inside orchestra. So that could have hindered my enjoyment. And then it comes back to, did I make the right choice not reading the book ahead of time? I'm mixed on this. I think if I were to see it again, I would cry more because since I know what's about to come, I would probably be more emotionally invested in some of those earlier act one scenes and songs and moments between characters. Whereas since I didn't know where this was going, I was in for a wild ride in act two, but didn't have as much of an emotional payoff as I would thinking it would be. I still am wholeheartedly recommending the show to people. I think there's a lot to love about it because we have spectacle elements of ensemble dancing, we have emotional elements, and we have these bold scenic design choices that make the production stand out, particularly in a season with shows that are using a more scaled back design. And as much as the score had its hits and misses for me, I mentioned I have four songs I'm eager to listen to when the rest of the cast recording releases in May. So I am absolutely recommending this to people. I just thought this was going to be a 5 out of 5 for me, but I'm giving it a 4.5 just because of my reasons with pacing and the score and emotional connection with the family. But I do think if I were to see this again, I could bump it up to a 5. Not that I will be seeing this again, just because since I'm not local, I don't usually see shows twice. But I am eager to hear people's thoughts on if they did read the book going into this and how they think that affected their enjoyment. I do think I want to read the book this summer, but I think I might wait till after I listen to the cast recording all the way through, and then I want to read the book. I think I'm going to do this in a specific order. So like I said, I'm giving this a 4.5 out of 5. I decided to start rating the shows that I'm seeing on Broadway just so in my head I can try to wrap my head around where I'm ranking them, and I'm going to share my rankings just to kind of have a central place to put my thoughts on the shows of the season and to give you a better idea of my taste in shows. So right now, now, my rankings for the shows I've seen this season are The Notebook 5, The Outsiders 4.5, Harmony 4, Merrily We Roll Along 3.5, Gutenberg 3, Water for Elephants 2, and Back to the Future 2. To get back to Tony's a little bit more, so now that The Notebook has officially opened and didn't get as many positive reviews as I was thinking, it seems like this is the perfect window of opportunity for The Outsiders to swoop in when it opens next week, depending on the positive reviews it gets. Despite me liking The Notebook better, than The Outsiders. I still am going to be recommending both of the shows to people. I think The Notebook I'm going to be recommending to people who want more of a smaller emotional story, whereas The Outsiders I'm going to be recommending to people who want more of a Broadway spectacle. 
this season. And of course, I'll be taking into consideration if the person I'm recommending it to is familiar with the original books or films these musicals are based on. That being said, as much as I like The Notebook more, I would still be happy if The Outsiders won Best Musical because I had a great time and still cried multiple times. And I know I'm going to be listening to this cast recording a bunch when it releases. I can't believe it's already April, which is Tony nominations month. And the Tony nominations are coming out at the end of this month. I'm not sure how many more trips I'll be having to New York between now and the Tonys, but I'm definitely between Suffs and Lempika for my next show. I'm torn between those two because it's kind of my goal to hit a theater milestone this season to try to see all the best musical nominees. However, I didn't see Days of Wine and Roses, so has that ship already sailed? Because if that gets in, because that show's already closed, there's no way I can see all the best musical nominees. So since that ship has potentially sailed, I think I'm just going to see what I want to see. And I don't know if I want to see Suffs or Lampika more. I'm thinking I might like the themes of Lampika more, but I like the performers and Suffs more. So I think I'm just going to see what I can get a better ticket deal for. I'm kind of torn by them. And then I also am hopefully seeing an enemy of the people with Jeremy Strong before the Tonys because I'm a big Succession fan. Hopefully I could see all three of those shows between now and the Tonys, Suffs, Lampika, and an enemy of the people. But it's unlikely I'm going to be squeezing in anything else such as Cabaret, Hell's Kitchen, or The Great Gatsby. But plans can change. Nothing's been booked, so we'll see what happens. Tell me in the comments your thoughts on The Outsiders on Broadway, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.